My name is uh, Sachin Sharma. Um, I am uh, working as an international coach and facilitator with Buji International. This is a company that I have started in India about uh, three years ago. Uh, I'm myself uh, settled in Australia for last 21 years. Um, in, I do now in my uh, personal space, I'm very passionate about uh, mindfulness, how I can bring more and more mindfulness in my own life as well as uh, people around me and whoever I meet and whoever I touch. Uh, and the same mission, same vision is for the company Vuji International is how we can contribute in building a more mindful society. That is what we do. Well, that's a great introduction that you have given about yourself. And uh, let's move ahead with the topic of emotional intelligence. So what exactly it means? Like, that's completely not a new uh, topic of suggestion or a discussion. Okay, we have been hearing yes. about it since long. But if right. somebody who is completely naive with this concept, how would you define it for him or her? Yeah, yes, uh, good question. Emotional intelligence, in fact, is more than 20 years old uh, topic. It was coined by uh, Daniel Goldman first. Uh, it picked up in uh, later part of uh, 2000s, almost 10 years uh, since he uh, coined this term. Uh, it was quite confusing for many people to understand. Uh, but this is now picking up mainstream in uh, corporate also. So I'll explain it in a very simple term, the way I understand emotional intelligence. Um, it is about how you manage your own emotions as well as emotions of the other people around you. So in the sense that how you can manage yourself such that the emotions of the other person does not affect you. You decide when you want to be emotional and when you don't want to be emotional, when you want to show. Um, this doesn't mean that we become robots or anything like that. It is more about that um, um, I decide. Uh, for example, if I am angry, uh, then I decide how much I want to be angry, for how long I want to be angry and how I want to be angry, in what way I want to express it. Uh, what do I want to say? How do I want to uh, make the other person know that I'm angry? It, so uh, it, it's not that I uh, say that anger is bad. So no emotions are considered good or bad. Emotions are just emotions. It's how we express uh, them uh, productively, resourcefully, as well as letting the other people also express it in front of us. So we don't get um, uh, blown away in, in their emotion. If someone comes uh, very angry uh, and, and start expressing that anger to me, um, it shouldn't intimidate or scare me or create fear in me or anger in me. So I should be emotionally intelligent enough uh, to work the way out for that person as well as for me and not get entangled with the emotions of that person and that situation. Uh, this is the this is what we term as emotional intelligence. Can it be, in other words, defined as something that you are able to control your uh, expression of emotions, something like that? You can. Uh, so control could be uh, a word that some people might uh, interpret it as suppressing. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than control, you say you choose your response. So you decide uh, if, if the situation is such that it is making you angry, then you express it. But you express it in a way that is uh, respectful for you as well as respectful for the other person also. Um, so I often use this, uh, this phrase, uh, which is uh, borrowed from uh, soccer. It says, play the ball, not the man. So often we forget about the ball, which is the issue at hand and we start playing the man, we start engaging with the other person and we become personal in, um, in our arguments. It could start with the issue, but very soon it turns into a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. And then the issue is on the side and no one is talking about the issue and people are now uh, engaged in like a, a personal brawl. Mm -hmm. So avoiding that, 
that so not not uh, getting an entangled in that kind of situation uh, is emotional intelligence so in a way being mindful also uh, will yeah. come into the picture right that how exactly you are expressing your emotions while being Absolutely. mindful to the others Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Emotional intelligence and mindfulness go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, without without mindfulness, you cannot become self-aware. <clears throat> so, um, emotional intelligence, as defined by uh, Daniel Goleman, has five components. One is uh, self-awareness, self-regulation, self-motivation, empathy, and social skills. So, these are the five uh, competencies. According to it, that if we develop these five core competencies then we we develop emotional intelligence if we get good at these five things we ultimately get good at emotional intelligence that's the simple uh, equation right so to for all the other four unless you have self awareness it's not possible to actually develop the other four productively so how do you develop self awareness is by first observing yourself and mindfulness is the ultimate way to actually develop emotional intelligence and hence the work that i do the work that we do through vijay international all about combination of emotional intelligence and mindfulness so as uh, as i was explaining about emotional intelligence um, i just thought of a story which i heard uh, many years ago i thought i'll share that with you there was a japanese samurai um a very fierce one very expert Jap- japanese samurai um the best in the world so one day he gets killed so um someone uh, murders him and his student who he has been training for some time he is a 10 year old boy at the moment um and also uh, becoming a very good warrior uh, takes a pledge that i will find the person who has killed my master and uh, and the day i will find him i will kill him now he spends the rest of his life looking for that person as well as he is also uh, practicing training himself to become a better samurai uh, as well 15 years pass so he becomes a 25 year old uh, young man uh, one of the best samurai warriors in the world and he is still looking so after 15 years he finds the person who has killed his master and the person who has killed the master he knows that i i have no chance in front of this guy if i come in front of this guy or if this guy catches me i'm dead for sure Okay. there is no chance in the world that there is a fighting chance that he can have so he's been doing a very good job running and hiding for all these years but finally he catches okay. so the day comes uh, this samurai warrior is standing in front of the killer um, and there is a sure shot death death for this killer what does the killer do at that time he spits on the face of this warrior as soon as he spits the warrior he puts his sword back and walks away now you will be thinking why some people think he he walks away because he feels um, uh, that uh, insulted or this and that and things like that the warrior puts his sword back and walks away because Um, that was the only way by the way that was the only way this killer could have survived he knew that this is the only way i would survive by spitting on his face now what has happened here is that when he spit on his face the warrior got really angry with insult with rage that how dare he spit on my face like this at that time the warrior realized if i kill this person right now i will kill him because i am feeling angry i am not going to kill him because of that vow that he took for his master and he can't kill the person twice so 
he has to walk away at that time pardon him and come back later looking for him because if he would have killed him that day he would have killed him out of his own personal anger and not out of his vow that he took that's emotional intelligence to be in that situation and still distinguish that right now i am feeling this anger because i am feeling personally insulted by this and if i take any action right now if i kill this person then i would re regret for the rest of my life that i killed him for my personal reason and not because of the vow that i took so that is that that level of mindfulness that level of self awareness self regulation this completes the entire thing is 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 in that act of putting the sword back and walking away at that time i have a question here how do you yeah. actually distinguish like he was able to distinguish that this is something a rage or a maybe being hurtful that he's feeling into that situation and that's why he walked away but ideally in our day to day life when we get engrossed into any emotion not only anger for that matter how can anyone distinguish or differentiate that why this emotion is coming across and how to manage it exactly but that that is that is the practice that is self awareness that is part of emotional intelligence so developing emotional intelligence as i mentioned is developing those five core competencies and one of the core competencies is self awareness so as you develop so self awareness means i am becoming more aware of what i am feeling right now how i am feeling right now being able to observe that being able to label that that right now this is happening that is happening with me and all that um so it's a practice it's not a tool or a technique right um tool or a technique in the sense yes there are pointers that how you can self observe how you can become self aware there are pointers uh, but it has to be done by the individual right you have to practice you have to sit with it you have to be mindful you have to be present you have to do all those things and then over time this becomes your second nature you start catching yourself like that so as per my understanding that goes ahead with your discussion is that you require levels of practice or maybe uh, i don't know like years of practice or being in a mindful person and then those things can come into the picture um it could take years it could take a lifetime for some people it could, even one lifetime might not be enough for many people or it could just take days it it's very much dependent on uh, person to person um many people already are quite mindful uh, without actually knowing that they are mindful they are already quite uh, practicing it uh, in itself but then formulating it making it as a process as a system uh, to do this um, helps to speed things up so uh, what happens that if there is a system or a process to follow uh, and you can measure uh, how you are going then definitely things can be uh, inculcated much faster they can be developed much faster if you just let it grow by itself uh, then who knows how long it will take who knows whether you are even going in the right direction or not because there is nobody there to even correct you that what you are doing where you are heading uh, but if there is a system there is a process that is there uh, then yes it can it can become it can accelerate um, so it can uh, whatever time it would take for you to do it all by yourself it will definitely shorten it is there any suggestions or maybe tips that you can give us across that how exactly we can inculcate this in our day to day life uh yes uh, and i think uh, that is exactly those are the kind of tips and uh, things that we will talk in our uh, in our series that we are going to uh, publish so th th those will be Uh, more contextual that way 